Hello, hello, and welcome to the second installment in the Ravelry Roulette series. The first installment of this new series was so well received. I'm absolutely stoked about that. You guys just made my day. I absolutely loved making that first video and I'm excited to get into it again today. If you have not seen the first episode of Ravelry Roulette, you should definitely go watch that. But essentially what we're doing here is diving into Ravelry and choosing patterns at random, three per video. And I share my first impressions on those patterns and it's a lot of fun. So we're gonna get started doing that today, but I think what I wanna do is before um, we go straight into Ravelry, I wanna look back at um, some of the comments under that last video because you guys were leaving suggestions for filtering options. Now, I don't wanna filter anything too heavily, but it would be kind of fun if we put in maybe one filter per episode and have that be the only filter that we use when we randomize our results. So that's what I wanna to do today. So I'm pulling up my screen. You can see here we are over on YouTube and I'm looking at the comments underneath that last episode. I'm just gonna scroll through until I see, I'm not gonna random, I'm just gonna see what I find here to see, cause I know a lot of folks, sorry, I'm gonna scroll fast for just a second. There were a lot of comments and I think it's amazing. This one says, I would love to see three random patterns in three different yarn weights, fingering, worsted, bulky. Um, that's another thing too, is do we wanna do three filters an episode or one filter with three examples of that one filter? Um, that I need to kind of think about that too, but it, we can do what we want. It's, it's, we can do what we want. Um, teas, let's see, summer things, stuffies. Oh, this person says, what a fun video. I say look up peach or peaches because peach fuzz is the Pantone color of the year. That's a good idea. Peach or peach fuzz. Maybe we'll do that today. Let's see what we come up with by putting in peach fuzz. Maybe... Okay, let's just see. Let's see what we come up with. Okay, let's let's see how narrow that, you know, narrows down our results. Um, because I don't really know. I don't know how that's going to be. So we're going to start here. We're on the Ravelry Patterns page. I'm going to go to Advanced Search. That's how you get to the Browse feature. Um, and this is going to take us to kind of the landing page for all of the patterns that are being browsed right now on Ravelry. This I have sorted by best match, but you can change that. So typically if you open up the Ravelry app on your device or whatever, it will automatically sort to hot right now. These are all the hot patterns that are being downloaded or viewed on Ravelry right now. You can also sort by new to Ravelry, um, names in alphabetical order, random order, most popular, all of these things. We are going to do random order because this is Ravelry Roulette and everything is, for the most part, random. The only thing I'm going to be typing in over here is, in the case of this video, peach. Let's just do that and see and see what happens. I am going to select crochet and knitting because why the hell not? And we're gonna leave it at that. That's the only filter, okay? Crochet and knitting and the word peach. Other than that, everything is random. And that gives us 6,796 matches, believe it or not, plenty to choose from. So now what I'm going to do is go over to my random number generator. Wait, go back. 6,796, okay. Um, Whoa, wait, so that's 6,796 total possible projects or patterns, but only 142 pages. You can see that here. So the first thing that we need to do is pick the page that we're gonna go to. So that would be one through 142. So our minimum is one through 142. Here we go, 27. So we go back over here. Let's go to page 27, shall we? 27, there we go. All right, okay. So now that we're here, from my previous episode, when you do this, you have 48 items on a page. Yes. So we have 48 possible options per page. So now we need to go back to our random number generator, one through 48. Generate. 45. All right, so we go down here. 48, 47, 46, 45. This, I typed in the word peach, okay? 
This doesn't look like it would have anything to do with word peach, but let's find out. This is the Cardinal Dishcloth by Louise Sarazen. And, oh, you know why? Suggested yarn, peaches and cream, original cotton yarn. A really great budget-friendly worsted weight cotton yarn for things like dishcloths like you're seeing here. All right, let's take a look. Now we know where the peach in this is coming from. This is one of those dishcloths that um, people are knitting right now that uses the pearl. I mean, I think these are things that people have been knitting for a while, but it uses the pearl bump as a way to create an image. I actually have, oh my God, I have, um, I started a set of dishcloths using the same technique for my sister-in-law, like I want to say a year and a half ago, and I have not finished them. And it has Queen Elizabeth II's face on the front. Um, where are those? Oh my gosh, they're somewhere. I got to find them. I got to finish them because they're, they're so cool. These are a lot of fun to make. Now, again, I haven't finished the ones that I started, but I really enjoy the process and seeing the image come out in front of you on, you know, the item that you're making. I really want to find them. Where did I put them? Hold on. This just reminds me that I have to get these finished. So what I, this is, this is like a really common style of dishcloth that I see on Ravelry a lot. And I need to pull these out and start working on them again. Wow, what a great reminder. Um, okay, so pardon me. I, I don't know what I thought I needed to be doing by knitting these two at a time, but that's what's taking me so long is I'm knitting these two at a time. They look like just little hand knit Papel picado, that just like little flags. Like how, okay. So this is what they are. This is mine of Queen Elizabeth I's face. Can you even tell? Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it. Can I see it? It's there, I promise. And I have this one here. Maybe this one will be easier to see. Sorry, I feel like I'm kind of stealing the show right now with this. Okay, anyway, I'm really happy about pulling those back out because I really need to finish those. They're super cute. But this cardinal dishcloth is the same concept. You're using pearl bumps to create an image on the dishcloth. And I think a set of these is so adorable, whether it's in your bathroom or your kitchen. How cute is that? Okay, so it uses worsted weight yarn, the peaches and cream, a size four needle. It's a, oh no, I was about to say it's a free pattern. Most of these patterns that have the pearl bump designs are not free. They're not. And some of them are like, I guess maybe some of them seem to be priced higher than you would expect. Um, but it's $1.50 for this pattern. A dish cloth designed with a dear friend of mine in mind. She loves cardinals. The finished cloth measures nine inch square and weighs 39 grams. Thanks to Tooney for her enthusiastic support and total willingness to drop everything and test knit yet another of my dish cloth ideas. So cool. Very cool. It's in 15 projects. Let's look through the projects and see what we got going on. <laughs> you know what? Dishcloths are so underrated, in my opinion. Everybody kind of thinks that dishcloths are just like, you know, oh, it's the, it's something that beginners knit or it's, it's not, I don't know, what is it? Like it's not glamorous enough or it's not, I don't know, but dishcloths are so nice to knit and they're, um, they're kind of a soothing project. Oh, I like, she, that's really cool. So cute. Come on. I love that. I want to go look at the comments up here. Oh, they're all red. I mean, it doesn't have to be a red dishcloth, but it's a cardinal, so I get it. Uh, your simple yet creative designs are so instantly recognizable, Louise. It's no wonder that Toonie drops everything to test knit one of your claws. Thank you so much for making this pattern. I'm going to be using it to put on a baseball themed blanket for a friend's baby. What a good idea. Okay, there we go. So that is, um, I'm gonna go back to the details page. That is our first pattern for today. Not really peach, but it uses peaches and cream, which is an interesting spin, but cardinal dishcloth. You guys, I'm so excited to pull these back out. Wow, it's like, it's like the universe was trying to send me a message, um, but you need to try this. If you need something like a, just something easy to work on um, in the car, if you're on a road trip or something like that, this is a really great place to go. Okay, back we go. Back to patterns. Let's see, we got random order. Let's type our word in there, peach. 
Again, we should have knitting and crochet. Yeah, there's more. Oh, there's more knitting patterns. I said there would be more crochet patterns. What, why would I say something like that? Okay, so we're gonna go back 142 pages. Here we go. Oop, not that many. One to 100. Oh, did it generate? Shoot, it, it might have generated and I didn't see it, but I'm generating it again and we're to 19. So we're going to page 19. All right, so we are on page 19 and now one through 48, there are 48 results on each page. 34. So we have, oh my goodness, y'all. <laughs> okay, now we're talking. A Princess Peach outfit. So this is a Mario reference. This is Princess Peach from Super Mario Brothers. Wow. Holy moly. It's categorized as a costume. Is this an actual child size? I look at this and I think it's like a doll size. Is this for like a baby or a toddler? Oh my gosh, it's so cute. And it's so like spot on. Here, hold on. Look, there's Princess Peach here. Here's Princess Peach. What is even this? No, go back. I don't want that. Stop it. I just want an image of Princess Peach. Here we are. Oh, Wikipedia. Perfect. That's Princess Peach. And this is the crocheted Princess Peach outfit. You guys, how stinking cute is this? The little gem right here, the crown. Let's get in here on this crown. Where did my other window go? Come back. Oh, this is probably one of the cutest things I've seen crocheted, like ever. This is adorable. If you have little children and you want to make for them a Princess Peach costume, this is sized zero to three, three to six, six to nine, nine to 12 months. I mean, hell, maybe you could size it up if you wanted to wear it for yourself for Halloween. What? That would be a lot of fabric and a lot of yarn. Holy moly. It is a $6 or excuse me, a six euro 50 um, priced pattern. Princess Peach outfit. Use this pattern to make this cute Princess Peach outfit. It can be a great gift for a newborn. <laughs> when anybody says like a gift for a newborn, it's funny to me. It's like the newborn doesn't know they're getting a gift. Can you imagine if the newborn understood what they were receiving when they received this outfit? It can be used for Halloween, first birthday, or just for an outing. I did a lot of work to make this pattern and now I'm sharing it with you. I can tell so much work went into that to just just the like the attention to detail is amazing. It says finished items may be unrestricted sold for profit on the condition that I am credited with the pattern. Cool. Okay, I love that. This is just the cutest little thing. Let's see what the projects look like. Is it one of those like things where, oh, okay, look at this. Oh my gosh, it's so stinking cute. That looks like, that is very small. I'm wondering what that was for. Let's see if it says size zero to three. Yeah, I mean, that's quite small. So cute. <laughs> wow. Just, it's just so sweet. So there you go, guys. Princess Peach outfit by Natalia Tirakova. This is a crocheted project, obviously. And it's for little littles, little littles. And it's adorable. All right, on to the next. Okay, we are back to the patterns page. Let's go back down and check. Where did it go? Oh, crochet and knitting are checked. And then let's type in our word, peach. Random order and search. Okay, we're still at the same number, 142. One through 142. Did it do it again and I missed it? <laughs> wow, okay, 106. Let's go to page 106. Here we go. Oh, oh, okay. Oh my gosh, <gasps> that's funny. And then now, one through 48. Did I do it? 13. All right, six, 12, <laughs> 13. Solo cup cozy. Again, I'm assuming this is gonna be because of the peaches and cream yarn, which it is. This is using peaches and cream yarn, okay. I love cup cozies. I talk about cup cozies in my last midweek ramble episode. Um, I really love cup cozies and I don't have one. And I always think like, 
this, I have one of these like giant Stanley cups. I know, whatever, we don't talk about it. But it would be cute if I had like a little crocheted cup cozy just for the bottom part down here, just to let everybody know like I'm cool, but maybe I'm not that cool. I, I'm not making a dig at crochet cup cozy. It's like that little quirky, nerdy, is that nerdy? Quirky, like little element to add to something that is like supposed to be considered really super cool because the Kardashians have it. But anyway, I'm loving what I'm seeing here so far. This is called the Solo Cup Cozy by Chris Moore, Chrissy's Over the Mountain Crochet. And this is probably one of the cuter cup cozies I've seen. Almost like you could make a bunch of these for like a gathering that you're having so that folks can have different ones on their solo cups at a party. I have a feeling that's the whole purpose of these, but they look really pretty simple and super cute. Oh, what the dilio. I'm pretty sure I need to make like at least six of these. Those are so stinking cute. Okay, now you guys watched the episode of my podcast where Lauren was with me. She's my bestie. She lives in California. Lauren, if you are watching this, you need to start making some of these. She crochets. She's great at crocheting and she's, I just, this is adorable. I feel like this would be right down her alley. I mean, it's kind of right down my alley. I'm loving this. Look at this one. Oh, I love that color. It's so cute. Very cool. I wonder if that would fit the bottom of my, my giant Stanley cup. Who knows? But those are super cute. So this is called the Solo Cup Cozy. It uses peaches and cream, worsted weight cotton yarn. You can get that at Michael's at Walmart. You can get that anywhere, it seems like. Only 60 to 70 yards using a size H hook. It is free. Or it's, okay, it's $4 if you purchase it um, from here, but there is a free version and I'm assuming that the free version is linked to a blog. Let's just go ahead and look here. No, see, I did that thing. Why do I do that? I don't want info in the notes. Oh, visit the pattern website. Sorry. Yeah. So usually what happens is, is if you have um, designers who are putting out patterns on their blog, you can have the pattern for free if you read the blog to get the pattern because they're, that's how they're making some money. So all of the ads that you see on the page, they're getting revenue from those ads. And so they, they benefit from you visiting their site for that reason. However, if you don't want the ads, then you can purchase the pattern on Ravelry, which for here, it's looks like it's $4. Um, but you can, again, you can go to the blog and see the free version. And it's nice because, I mean, I don't know if you're into this kind of thing, um, but you can read about the process maybe. Um, but if you kind of just like to cut to the chase, it might be more your thing to just pay. I don't love all the ads um, on the page in the middle. I don't mind the ones on the side or whatever, but these ones that pop up. Okay, we're just now going on a, down a rabbit hole. So anyway, this is um, a $4 pattern. Otherwise, it's free on the blog. It says this cotton solo cup cozy is crocheted using the diamond shell stitch. You'll find this stitch on Crochet Kim's website. I had to make few adjustments. I had to make few adjustments had to be made because of the yarn I was using as it is stiff. The bottoms of the cozy are solid and will soak up most of the moisture. If you make them in more than one color, it will be easy for folks can keep track of their cup. The set I made matches the Pioneer Woman dishes. Colors were used, colors used coral, fresh lilac, mint, rosemary, white, and candy sprinkles ombre. Cute. Wouldn't a red, white, and blue set would be lovely at a Ju July picnic or a nautical theme with little gold buttons? <laughs> so cute. So many possibilities. A Thanksgiving set would be fun. Oh my gosh, yes. Of course, an everyday set would be wonderful too. All in one color, maybe. The, there are many options. You know what this makes me think of? We have um, we have some like uh, glass tumblers that our kids use in the morning or even at dinner when they're having like water or juice or whatever with their meal. And some of them that they use are a little bit more delicate. And this is a really great way to add a little bit of stability to a tumbler that your kid is using when they set it down on the table. It doesn't, you know, whatever. It just kind of is shock absorbing. And that's a really great idea. They're just so stinking cute. Really cool, really loving that. Let me look, there's only one project. Let's see, cute. Oh yeah, and this is just around a regular tumbler. Oh look, there's more than one picture. Yep, so cute. Cute confirmation. 
Why are we looking here? Maybe this one needs one. That's a nice thermos. Okay, yeah, I'm obsessed. I kind of feel like I need to make a couple of these. What do you guys think? Like, each of us, if we each just, you know, made six of them at least, we'd have a whole set. We got to keep it to three. We don't want to go crazy using the buzzword peach for our filter. And today we had a uh, crochet. Did we even have anything that was knit? What was the first thing that we did? We had the um, princess peach costume. We had those cozies or uh, those, yeah, the cup cozies. What was the first thing that we did? Oh, the, um, sorry, the washcloth. I and mean, that was knit. So we had one knit and two crochet. That was a good balance. That was awesome. We did great, you guys. This is so much fun. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you'd like to see as like a filter coming through. And then at the beginning of each of these videos, I will go through the comments and we'll pick out, you know, a filter option. I'm not sure if I'm going to have a more, you know what I'm going to do? Here we go. Hashtag Ravelry. No, no, no. Hashtag filter in the comment if you're leaving me an idea for a filter for a future future video. But what I'll be doing is at the beginning of each video, going through the comments, we'll pick our filter, we'll head over to Ravelry, type it in the box, and we'll go. And I love it. So thank you guys. Thank you for taking the time to hang out with me. If you took value from today's video and enjoyed yourself, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and click that bell for notifications so you're notified every time I upload new content just like this here on the channel, which is typically every Wednesday and every Sunday. But these Ravelry Roulette videos are going to be sprinkled in randomly so you can kind of keep your eye out for that. But until we meet again, which will be at the end of next week, I'm going on vacation. Happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.